Alright, so now we'll be finishing up with the female reproductive. We'll look at the external genitalia. And then we'll look at oogenesis, um, o which is the formation of the ova or the egg. So collectively, the external genitalia in females is called the vulva. And it's going to include the mons pubis, the labia, the clitoris, the urethral orifice, vaginal orifice, and the greater vestibular gland. And orifice is basically just referring to the openings. I cannot write on here. Openings. So obviously the opening of the urethra and the opening of the vagina. So this is showing the vulva. Uh, we have the mons pubis. We have the mons pubis up here. Um, mons basically means mountain. Um, it's an area of fat uh, in women that is uh, in front of the pubic bone. Then we have both the labia majora and the labia minora, which we'll get to in just a minute. Uh, we have the clitoris and then the prepuce of the clitoris. The vestibule, which is going to refer to the entire area within the labia minora. The urethral orifice, or the opening of the urethra, and then the opening of the vagina. Then you have the greater vestibular glands on either side of that. Um, then you have the perineum, which is going to be an all-inclusive area in here, and then the anus. So like I said, the mons pubis is a fatty area. It does overlie the pubic symphysis, and this is what becomes covered with hair after puberty. And I already pointed that out on the other side. The labia, you have two labia. You have the labia majora, which is the hair-covered skin fold. Um, this is actually comparable to the scrotum in males. And then the labia minora is going to be the delicate hair-free folds of skin within the labia majora. So the labia majora is going to be this outer skin fold, the labia minora is going to be this inner skin fold. The vestibule is going to be basically the entire area that's enclosed by the labia majora. Um, it is hairless skin in that region, um, and the skin will have a different texture than the other areas. Um, it does contain the external openings of both the urethra and the vagina. And then also within the vestibule, you have the greater vestibular glands. Um, you have one on each side of the vagina, and this is what secretes a lubricant during sexual intercourse. So this entire area inside of here is going to be the vestibule. So, um, here we have the greater vestibular glands, one on either side of the vagina. The clitoris uh, is basically corresponding to the male penis. It does contain erectile tissue. Um, it is headed by a prepuce, like the penis is headed by a prepuce or foreskin. Um, and it does become swollen with blood during sexual excitement um, because it is, uh, contains erectile tissue. So in developing embryos, um, this is the area um, an embryo will have what's called an indifferent penis. And that will either turn into uh, the clitoris if it's a female or a penis if it's a male. And so here is the clitoris. Uh, the perineum is going to be the diamond-shaped region. Um, it basically, instead of explaining in words, it's this area that's surrounded by the dashed line. This whole entire area will be the perineum. So it'll include this external genitalia right here, and then also come back here and include the anus as well. So now we're gonna look at the formation of the eggs and the ovarian cycle. Uh, like I stated in the last notes, a big difference between males and females. While males will produce sperm their entire life, females will actually be born with all of their primary oocytes that they will ever have. So once you're born, you're not gonna make any more eggs. Just the ones that you actually have will mature and be released throughout your lifetime. They won't start to be released until puberty. 
Um, and then, of course, the reproductive ability ends at menopause. Also, a big difference in males. Males can basically produce sperm forever. Um, and then oocytes are going to be your egg cells. And these are matured into developing ovarian follicles. So just like in males, we have the spermatogonia, which are the male stem cells. So for the females, we have the oogonia. Um, uh, we have the oogonia. Um, like I said, they will be found in the developing fetus. They will undergo mitosis to produce primary oocytes. So the primary oocytes are going to be basically the immature egg cells um, that you are born with as a female. And they are going to be surrounded by cells that fo uh, form primary follicles in the ovary. Basically your ovaries are full of these immature egg cells and then every month one of them will mature within a follicle and then be released. Um, so by the time you're born, you actually don't have any more oogonia or the female stem cells. Um, you'll only have those primary oocytes. Uh, they are going to be inactive until puberty. Uh, one of the things that triggers them to start maturing each month is going to be follicle stimulating hormone, which is released by your anterior pituitary gland. Um, and you have a cyclic monthly change in your hormones. And this constitutes the ovarian cycle. Uh, so basically, meiosis starts inside a maturing follicle. Uh, so you start with a primary oocyte. It will pretty much be turned into a secondary oocyte and a first polar body. Um, the follicle development um, takes about 14 days. Um, so after about 14 days, this is when ovulation will occur. So the egg will actually, the secondary oocyte will actually be released from the ovary. Um, and the luteinizing hormone, or LH, is going to be one of the things that actually triggers ovulation to occur or triggers the release of the secondary oocyte. So whenever that secondary oocyte is released, um, it is surrounded by corona radiata. Um, it basically looks like a halo that's surrounding it, and the purpose of that is actually um, kind of what is attracting the sperm towards that actual secondary oocyte. So here we have the secondary oocyte, and then this halo around it is going to be that corona radiata. Uh, one of the things that's kind of crazy uh, that most people don't really know is that um, I know you remember learning about meiosis in biology, but um, remember meiosis has two stages. You have meiosis one and you have meiosis two. So you start off with one cell and then you're going to end up with four cells that have half of the number of chromosomes. Well, um, in females, that second stage of meiosis will actually only occur if sperm actually penetrates the egg. So if sperm penetrates the egg, uh, it produces the ovum. So now it is technically an egg cell. Um, and then it produces two additional polar bodies. Um, once the ovum is formed, you have 23 chromosomes in the egg, 23 chromosomes from the sperm that will form together to actually form the zygote. If the secondary oocyte is not penetrated by sperm, it will die and does not complete meiosis to form an ovum. And it will stay viable for about 24 hours. So, like I just was talking about, male and female differences. Meiosis, males produce four functional sperm, and females, it produces one functional ovum and three polar bodies. Um, the sex cell size and structure. Sperm are the smallest cells in the human body. They are teeny tiny, they are motile, because they're the only ones that have a flagellum, and um, they have a lot of nutrients and seminal fluid to help keep them alive. The egg is the largest cell in the human body. Um, it is non-motile, even though it does get moved through the female reproductive tract, it cannot move on its own, and it has uh, nutrient reserves to nourish the embryo until implantation. 
So this is showing basically uh, the entire process of oogenesis, so formation of the egg cells. So um, this is looking at the follicle development alongside the events of mitosis and then the events of meiosis. So I'm going to click through where it zooms in. So pretty much this is going to be what's happening in a female before she is even born. So you have the uh, female stem cell, the oogonium. It's going to undergo mitosis, so you'll notice that they both have two sets of chromosomes. And um, so you end up with a primary oocyte, and that primary oocyte will be surrounded by a primary follicle. It's basically the follicles are going to be about one cell thick. So the primary oocyte will stay in prophase one, which is the first stage of meiosis, um, for a really, really long time until that primary oocyte basically is triggered to start uh, maturing, where it will then, you know, turn into an egg cell. So here we have our primary oocyte drawn by a primary follicle still. So once you are born, you go through childhood, the ovary is inactive, you've got nothing occurring, all those primary oocytes are just hanging out in there, arrested in prophase one. So you start going through, meno uh, not menopause, I'm sorry, you start going through puberty. So once you start going through puberty, every single month, one of those primary oocytes, unless someone hyperovulates, well, then they could have more than one. One of those primary oocytes will um, start to mature. So you'll notice that the follicle itself is going to start growing in size. So here we have the primary follicle, and you'll see that it's being surrounded by more and more cells. So this is that primary oocyte inside. So now what we have occurring is we'll see right here, this is now considered a mature follicle or a graphene follicle. Uh oh, skipped around some. Um, a graphene follicle. So this primary oocyte is going to start maturing and turn into a secondary oocyte after it goes through the first stage of my meiosis. So after the first stage of meiosis, you start off with one cell, you end up with two cells. Well, so right here we have our one cell, we end up with two cells. We have our secondary oocyte and a polar body. It is at this time that the, um, so it's just arrested in metaphase two. So it's in that second stage of meiosis. Now it is going to be released or ovulated um, and released from the uh, ovary. And once that occurs, then the sperm can actually penetrate into the secondary oocyte. Once it penetrates into the secondary oocyte, those cells will undergo the second stage of meiosis and you produce two additional polar bodies. So with one primary oocyte, you will only end up with one actual ovum. But remember, it will not be turned into an actual ovum unless sperm penetration actually occurs. And that shows the summary of events. And that's the female reproductive system. The next set of notes will look at uh, the menstrual cycle and uh, pregnancy and fetal development.